Hello everyone. I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today. I hope you have a fabulous conference and I'm here to present the SEAL Community of Practice data from 2023. I always have to thank our funders because without them we can't fund our 1.5 full-time equivalent rangers who look after our massive volunteer network. So thanks to all our public and private voluntary funders. We are fundamentally guided by the philosophy of the Ecozoic, which is about sharing our seas successfully and making sure that we mitigate impacts along the way. So we had 252 volunteer citizen scientists involved from Wales all the way through to uh, Hampshire this year, doing a range of different activities from being eyes and ears for change, all the way through to taking practical conservation actions, as well as doing things like fundraising and report writing. We managed 13 surveys every single day of the year, which is exactly the same as we did the year before. And we conducted 20 boat-based transects involving 188 volunteers, seeing some utterly incredible other marine species as well as seals, as you can see. We collected data from 328 locations across multiple different types of habitats. And uh, the Somerset Sea Watch Foundation recorded 14 grey seal sightings uh, thanks very much to Vanessa for sending that in. On average, we saw 9.2 seals, a maximum of 458 down from 557 and 519 in 2021 and 2022. Of all the seals sighted, 66% were adults, of which 56% were males. And this is exactly the same proportion, despite a huge data set from 2021 and 2022. We had 581 sightings of grey seal pups at 39 different locations, 11 of which were on the south coast, which is 1% of all seal sightings. And Mel Broadhurst Allen from Alderney recorded the first pup, first four pups on Alderney, and there were 14 pups on Jersey. And there was a first pup seven miles inland up a river in South Devon. Our long-term data continues to show phenology shifts with the peak haul out season being in January in 2023 compared to April and March back in 2004, whereas um, the maximum number of pups born also occurred in September followed by August in 2023. But in 2023, 20, 23 pups were recorded more in August than they had been in October, whereas by 2022 it was only four. So that's another earlier shift in the season. There were 25 records with 44 sightings of harbour seals. 12 of them were single seals, but a maximum of four were seen at any one time. British Divers Marine Life Rescue rescued five harbour seal pups, so there are more being born than we know about. Dorset Seal Project had 19% of their sightings made up by harbour seals. A harbour seal pup was reported by Gower Seal Group and the river pontoons recorded uh, two harbour seal pups as they were remotely cameraed um, by the seal project. We had 105,000 photos processed into a large number of albums, nearly 2,000. And they included 11,409 IDs, of which 84% were re-identifications. They included 3,175 unique seals, with a maximum of 145 being identified in a single survey. These are a selection of IDs from North Devon. 34 IDs of seals were from seals we've known for 20 plus years. Five were first identified in 2000, six in 2001, nine 2002, and 14 in 2003. But of those 34, only six were males, suggesting males might be in trouble. Dorset Seal Catalogue added seven new seals to the 119 they have in that catalogue now. We partner with Cornwall Wildlife Trust Marine Strandings Network and identified six seals that were washed up dead, including swims. She was first identified in 2007. She had a pup that we know about in 2018. Her last live sighting was in August 2023, and she was found dead in November. Cornwall Wildlife Trust Marine Strandings Network recorded more dead seals than ever, 301, approximately half of which were white coat pups and malted pups. The malted pups appear to be the issue with the green bars dying in the first winter, uh, 
with more seals dying in Cornwall in 2023 than were born, which could suggest that there is a big issue. The Cornwall Marine Pathology team, uh, James Barnett and his partners did 39 post-mortems on seals, two adults, 32 malted pups and three white coats, of which 18 died of trauma, 14 of infection, others were and not established. I think there were nine in total, sorry, I can't quite see the number. The stomach, uh, which is marked by an asterisk in this photo, is lying strangely inside the thorax. It's moved through a tear in the diaphragm. And this is the kind of information that is really fascinating and teaches us new things about seals. British Divers Marine Life Rescue Seal Hospital had 114 seal pups through its doors in the season, 58 of which went to the Cornish Seal Sanctuary and 56 to RSPCA West Hatch. They had malted grey seal pup rescued from Somerset, which is very unusual, and that was taken to uh, Cornish Seal Sanctuary. There were 732 sightings of 126 different ex-rescue rehab and released tag seals, which made up 2% of all sightings. The oldest was Lewis, who's shown in the photo, who was released in the Isles of Scilly in 2001. You can see from his visit calendar with years across the top, months down the side, colours being locations and numbers being the number of IDs, that he used to spend quite a lot of time at West Cornwall and has now dis, uh, kind of defected to the purple area and pink area, which is on the south coast, although he does still come up to North Cornwall in some years. There were four releases in South Devon and the Dorset Seal Project had a very exciting tag seal link showing a 400 mile swim from the wash to Dorset. Well done that seal. There were 732 sightings of 81 different entangled seals, making up 2% of all sightings, maximum of 15 seen in a single survey. There were 13 hook seals, mostly in mackerel gear, and the inset shows hooks in a malted pup's bottom. That's got to hurt a lot. But this malted, this pup, uh, sorry, this juvenile also has hooks in its rear end and its muzzle. And the muzzle is the most sensitive, sensitive of most mammals. We know from uh, Sea Mammal Research Unit papers that 85% of UK bycatch occurs in the southwest of the UK for seals. This juvenile died in very unfortunate circumstances when uh, the netting got attached around the propeller. They managed to limp into the harbour and waited until the tide went out in order to cut it free. But by that time, this juvenile seal had got herself caught up in it. It's interesting to see the um, injuries that she got as a result, which were lacerations on the head, lacerations on her flippers, broken teeth and gums. The broken teeth were particularly interesting because we have long theorised that seals can't bite through net because they have no molars. So all they can do is try and rip their way out of the net and that rips their gums and breaks their teeth. There were 1,328 seriously disturbed seals in 156 incidents in 2023, with a maximum of 163 disturbed on the 17th of December, as shown in the photo. This is by people accessing the beach. It is an offence because this is a triple SI where it is illegal to disturb seals. So this was followed up by Natural England. Solent seal surveys show powered vessels disturbed more seals and 12% of sightings in Dorset had land and sea disturbance. What do we do with all this information? Well, we did 69 talks and 20 workshops. This is me delivering an online school session of which we did eight. We run three courses for the Field Studies Council across four weeks each. We did, we did three wildlife safe scheme courses. 109 people have now been through our free online volunteer training. We ran four workshops on how to crowdfund and careers for uh, all age groups and started to write and finished a conservation diver course, which is our brand new course for next year. In terms of field engagement, which occurred 217 times, we talked to 2,662 people at least. But as shown in the photo, we were most worried when this white coated pup was born on a very public beach. We didn't think it would make it through its first winter. However, thanks to 35 different volunteers covering 232 volunteer hours and talking to 837 people, I'm delighted to say that after 15 days, this little tiny white coat had grown into a fat chonk and had been successfully weaned from its mother. We had 322 meetings of, this is, of which this is our monthly online Seal Southwest session. 
uh, we talked with politicians, statutory agencies, university students, businesses, artists and, char and charities. We wrote 27 reports, of which these are the two key ones. Uh, we were commissioned to write about how both boat-based surveys other species for Natural England, and also they commissioned a report about our network of sensitive seal sites across the southwest UK. We participated and provided evidence for 35 consultations. I managed to draft a Westminster debate on seal protection that was delivered by Sarah Olney, and Dorset Wildlife Trust designated county wildlife sites the first for man-made structures, which was very exciting. We led four campaigns, one on disturbance, where we're trying to get seal disturbance made illegal. It is still not happened yet, but hopefully they will get added to the Wildlife and Countryside Act sometime soon because it was a JNCC recommendation and also a recommendation of the EFRA Committee Inquiry on Marine Mammals. Unfortunately, the recommendations were rejected by the Environment Minister, so we're continuing to work with DEFRA officials to make this happen. Second campaign was about flying rings, which are toys. Unfortunately, wings got caught up in one and in less than two weeks, it was already tight around her neck from water resistance and her telescopic action for catching prey. But I'm delighted to say British Divers Marine Life Rescue managed to rescue her. First adult female seal that was healthy that has managed to be rescued successfully. Turns out she's the best conservationist of all of us. Her video went viral and had over a million hits and it was an epic rescue. So well done to British Divers Marine Life Rescue. We continue to uh, distribute our leaflet about climate change impacts on seals and uh, our film is very popular on YouTube. But a new one for us was marine geoengineering projects in an attempt to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This carbon dioxide removal ocean alkalinity project is planned for St Ives Bay and unfortunately the science around it is very unknown and there is no governance internationally so we're very worried about it. It featured in one of our 63 media appearances on the politics show for the southwest. We managed 11 events and stalls in 2023 with one exhibition in the Isle of Wight for eight months. And I'm delighted to say Dorset Seal Project were featured on Spring Watch, and we suggested that uh, Chris Packham look at seal whiskers for Winter Watch. In terms of highlights, there were lots, but to keep it short, Star Skateboard, who was a mum of a pup in 2003, disappeared after she had her pup. She was only ever seen twice. However, in 2023, she suddenly returned looking fit and healthy, was recognised straight away by me from both sides, where she'd been for 20 years. Coincidentally, in the same month, we had another adult female seal return after an absence of 16 years. Seal world is so complex. Another highlight was Ghost appeared with her 20th pup in 21 years. She always hides them, it's hiding behind the rock. And I'm delighted to say that Nicola, our volunteer, managed to get a photo of her making pup number 21. So if she survives for another year, we'll have another record. And I was delighted to accept on behalf of the whole of the Seal Research Trust an MBE for our charity. Uh, I was wearing a ridiculous fa a fascinator and I never wear a dress, but I did on this occasion. My favorite artist is Van Gogh and I believe his work is prophetic because it speaks of the planetary turmoil we now find ourselves in, in terms of climate change and marine plastics. So when the King looked at my fascinator, which featured chairlift, my first ever re-identified seal, he was made out of a marine rope that was found upon a beach by Michelle Costello from Smarty Lives on the beach, very delicately stitched together. He's surrounded by marine pyroplastics from burning net on beaches. And of course, the waves are lost fishing net. As soon as the king looked at it, he said, what's that? And there I was off about all seals being utterly unique and also talking about planetary and, and marine issues. Quick plug, we have an exhibition for art and science at the Jackson Foundation in Cornwall uh, until the 10th of August. And my final three slides. Unfortunately, there are a lot of emerging issues for seals. Human activity, because we're everywhere. I've mentioned about hooked seals. Gower Seal Group recorded drone disturbance, 
There's a lack of rehabilitation space and with climate change impacts, we need more than ever. New pathogens such as mouth rot being studied by British Divers Marine Life Rescue. I've talked about the phenology shifts and I've also talked about the marine and geoengineering projects. Unfortunately, the International Maritime Organization suggests that these projects could have unknown deleterious effects. There were unusual mortality events. In Kaikoura, a thousand seal pups died of nutritional stress. And in Argentina, 17,000 or 96 pups born died of avian influenza. Pharmaceutical runoff continues to be an issue with ibuprofen found in Arctic zooplankton. We need to have an eco NOMI. Time is running out for a good life for children who are already born on this planet. If you look at a book by Dieter Helm, it tells you how we can have an eco NOMI. It's called Legacy. Please look it up. It's a free book. And unfortunately, the polarisation between the economists and the environmentalists this polarisation shouldn't exist and it's stopping us making a lot of progress because without the environment, we don't have an economy and without an economy, nature would thrive. In terms of interactions with the other topics from the Swami uh, repertoire, seals link to pretty much all of them um, with changing patterns linked to oceanography, geoengineering linked to climate, uh, seals and the seabed, well, that's where they feed, Obviously, we're linked to fish because that's their prey. Uh, is there spatial, spatial overlap and competition with other marine mammals? Food avail availability and range is affected by fronts. Uh, human activity management and mitigation, well, obviously, that's linked to marine plans. We don't yet protect seals in terms of, of MPAs. We definitely need site-based approaches. Fisheries, well, they have a huge impact on seals in terms of prey, bycatch and entanglement. Toxins and PCBs and turbidity of sea, particularly for multi pups who are learning to feed, is an issue in terms of water quality. Lost fishing gear, flying rings, and macroplastics and microplastics are an issue for pollution, and increase in noise and activity le levels uh, could negatively impact seals in terms of floating wind, but they could also become protected no take zones, which would be positive. Conclusions well, obviously, our volunteer citizen science network is very busy. Seal numbers appear to be stable, but it's very complex and there's lots of variation. Uh, Celtic sea migration means that we have way more seals visit the southwest than single counts suggest. Photo ID definitely adds depth to our understanding of seal issues and their conservation needs. Our habitat seems to be changing as seals move from the north to the west to the south coast and from big sites to small sites. Males might be in trouble. We need to manage people around seals much more effectively, such as is done on Lundy and other locations. We're stronger together, but we need to grow our audience massively to have a much bigger impact. And unfortunately, the ocean is the next commercial frontier, which I find personally terrifying. Emissions reductions are vital for all of us, and we need to localise our lives. We all need to do this to protect ourselves and the next generation of people and seals. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that's been informative.